This is John Black, super chemist. Uh, we're here to make some glacial ethanoic acid, uh, or you can call it, most people know it by glacial acetic acid. So I'm going to call it glacial acetic acid from, from now on throughout the video. And that basically the glacial part just means that it's got no water. It's pure uh, acetic acid. Now I dried some out. Uh, and it always has lumps in it when you dry it out. I'm assuming that, that there's water in it. Uh, so what I do, I really don't need glacial acetic acid that much, but I'm doing it for this video because I do, do need some acetic acid for my uh, potassium dichromate video. Uh, so I'm going to get a little bit out of here just to do a, make it glacial. What I do is I get this. It's basically a strainer. I strain out the powder, just the powder. Now, as you can see, it's like a fine sugar. It's more like flour. Yeah, there's no lump. It's like talcum powder. All right, I'm set up for distillation. On the pot there, you can see I have 164 grams of sodium acetate. I'm going to drip some sulfuric acid in there. 150 milliliters and uh i'll do that as i'll do that not too fast as you can see it's right up there where the thermometer would be and once i have it dripped in then i will replace that with the uh, thermometer um there's my setup it's just a basic s simple distillation um you can see that i got the funnel there uh, so if anything comes out any vapors It'll go through that funnel to the water and get bubbled out or scrubbed out. So here I am. I'm starting to drip it in. And uh, pretty much as soon as you drip it in, it starts boiling. I mean, this stuff is, it, it, you know, it's 80 degrees as soon as you start uh, dripping it in. Uh, vapors start coming. And uh, you can see right there. Now, this took me about 45 minutes, an hour, something like that to drip that in. And as soon as I dripped it in, I started to heat it up. Um, now, if you're now, I, I didn't use the powder in this video because I, I don't need glacial acetic acid. But I just used uh, almost anhydrous, and I didn't use 98% sulfuric acid. So I'm just making concentrated. But you do it the same way. Keep in mind, uh, acetic acid boils at uh, 118 to 119 degrees Celsius. So if you're doing glacial, you just boil off the, uh, so you can see right here my front coming up. Um, but you just boil off between uh, 118 and 119, and you got your glacial acetic acid. Me, I'm taking everything, because the only liquids in there are sulfuric acid and the acetic acid. And sulfuric acid boils at like, I don't know, 330 Celsius or something like that. Um, so I'm not worried about that. And uh, I did it at a pretty fast rate. It took me like maybe two hours to do this. And I did it twice, so it actually took four hours. Because um, I couldn't fit it all into the flask, and I didn't want to be there for four hours straight. As you can see, even on the other side, I should have used a bigger uh, condenser, water condenser there. A lot of vapors made it past it. Um, but I'll tell you what, I... I'm glad I broke the adapter that goes there because normally you'd have an adapter and it'd go straight to my round bottom flask. But uh, I don't have that. As you can see, what happens is the vapors get trapped up up there and they just get pushed through this little tube here when it drips. And it basically all that fumes just go straight into the acetic acid that's already there. It dissolves right in it. So that's a great thing because normally the tube would be up there on top and it would just escape right out into the atmosphere. This kind of makes it so it comes out and goes straight into the liquid. I, I kind of like this method here. See about right there is where the hose would be coming out. Yeah, right there. And as you can see, all that smoke would be coming out that going into my funnel. I'd have to bubble all that and lose it. This way, it gets stuck there, and it only can come out that little tube. See there, that little tube inside? And then, 
it has to make it back up to the to the funnel. So anyways, here we are about halfway through or and you can see it's boiling. The top is still hard as heck with wet spots. Um, at the beginning of the distillation, I shake the whole apparatus. I just clamp onto it and shake the whole thing. And uh, it doesn't really do much, but it helps a little bit. And then I check all my joints, and then I start the distillation up. Like I said, I used a tiny condenser. I probably should have used a bigger condenser. But it really wasn't a problem. And uh, like I said, I did this twice the second time. I didn't even put sodium hydroxide in my bubbler over there where the funnel is. I just put uh, plain water. And I'll tell you what, I don't even think I needed that funnel. And here we are, we're getting down to the down to the last you know when you're done when all your stuff has fallen into the liquid and it's mostly liquefied uh the other way other thing is is it'll stop boiling because sulfuric acid boils so high temperature that uh it'll just stop boiling and the third thing is is nothing will start will be coming over you know what i mean you'll stop getting your acetic acid you can see it's just puffing a little bit by a little bit because there's so little in the uh pot that it's just, you know, doing little puffs. See how it's starting to clear up on that side? Remember all the cloudiness? And now all the vapors are pretty much gone. And it's just dripping out acetic acid. I have a tin full of there to separate the heat from the uh, cooling uh, condenser uh, so I don't have to use as much ice. You can see there's really nothing coming out. There's like a drop every like minute. So at this point, I'm starting to give up. And whatever's in the pot, I just said screw it. Well, there you go. That's from, remember, I did this twice now. Uh, I think the theoretical yield. 240 milliliters uh, so this is a 500 milliliter round bottom flask as you can see it's almost filled up 250 to be half uh, so I did get about 240 so that was a decent yield uh, keep in mind now if you were making glacial acidic acid you do it the same exact way but you're going to get a smaller uh, yield because this has some water in it you know what I mean uh, but other than that uh, there's your yield. All right, glacial acetic acid or ethanoic acid. Um, it's just the same as alcohol almost. Here's alcohol, ethanol, vodka. And here's what we just made. See how it has two carbons? Two carbons. Two hydroxyl groups. Two. Uh, what the difference is, is this is oxidized. This has two hydrogens there. And this has two bonds to the same uh, thing in oxygen. Uh, so that's what makes that different. This Now, if I had the potassium dichromate uh, or any kind of oxidizer, really, a good oxidizer, I could just oxidize this to this. And uh, I wouldn't have to do But this is a different method here that we're doing. Uh, that's what this prefix ethan, ethanoic, ethanol, get it, ethan, uh two carbons so anyways here's what we did to get our uh acetic acid um we got some sulfuric acid and we just dripped it onto the sodium acetate and you can see from the, how i did that see how you got sodium sulfate sodium bisulfate because it took one of the hydrogens then you got the uh, oac oac it took a hydrogen so you got your acetic acid, and you can see from the words too. Just take a hydrogen from here. And you got your sodium, and your sulfates from the sulfuric. Uh, anyways, you got uh, now. And keep in mind, I said this in the 
nitric acid video because I basically made nitric acid the same way. I dripped sulfuric acid onto a nitrate. And I think I brought it up about how this does. This is acidic, but it's not really that acidic. The bisulfate has a pKa of uh, 2, and the uh, first proton, or the first hydrogen on sulfuric acid, has a pKa of negative 3. So that's a big difference. I mean, those are by magnitudes of 10. You know what I mean? So even though it's a difference of, say, 5, each one of those is an you know, a multitude of 10. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, cause that, that's a big difference in a pKa. Um, and actually, I th you got to be lower than negative 2 to be a strong acid. I mean, sulfuric acid just makes it in there, and then this does not. Uh, so it is not a strong acid. Anyways, uh, so I take one mole per one mole. Uh, it's 53 milliliters per mole. Uh, I just use 95%. If you use 98, then divide by, if you're making glacial, you divide by 0 0.998 uh, to find out how many milliliters. But I want to throw some extra in, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so there's 56 milliliters per mole. I needed two of them because I put two moles of that in. That gave me 112 milliliters. That gave me 100, 112 milliliters down there at the bottom here. And as you can see, I added in 150 just because it's a nice round number. I didn't want to put in a whole extra mole. Um, so I ended up putting 38 milliliters extra in. That's 68% of a mole. So I put two moles in plus 68% of a mole. Because um, I have done this experiment a couple times before this, and uh, it doesn't seem to give me a good yield. Uh, this time I actually got a decent yield. And uh, so throwing a little bit in extra is pretty good. I didn't want to do a whole mole, so I like nice even numbers. Anyways, to move on. So I got two moles of this. 82 grams a mole, it's 164 grams. That's why I used that. I'm a th theoretical yield. Uh, this is 60 milliliters a mole times two, because we put two moles in of the sulfuric acid and the sodium acetate. So that's 120 milliliters per each reaction. Because remember, I said I did this twice. Uh, so times two gives us 240 milliliters theoretical yield. And so I, so I have uh, four moles of acetic acid or ethanoic acid concentrated. And you saw before that uh, it actually was pretty good yield. Now keep in mind, mine has water in it uh, because I didn't use all powder like I showed at the beginning of the video. Um, but the whole process is the same exact way to make glacial. Just make sure it's nice and powder with no lumps. Make sure your sulfuric acid is um, anhydrous and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll just uh, distill it over between 118 and 119. You're going to have some glacial acetic acid. Um, it's that simple. Uh, one last thing. Another way you can, if you have some concentrated acetic acid, concentrated ethanoic acid, um, you can always do this, all right? You can make, uh, reflux it with an anhydride. Now, what's an anhydride? A carboxylic acid anhydride. You take the carboxylic acid. I have two of them here, what we just made. Um, now, let's say, look at how I have the, look at the blue. What if I took an OH off of this and an H off of that, and I connected them together like that? That removes one water molecule, and that's how you get an anhydride. So if I reflux this anhydride with some, eth I mean, uh, with some ethanoic acid, and there's a little bit of water in there, the water will react with this to turn it back into ethanoic acid. So you end up with glacial acetic acid. And always remember, science is great.